Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has emerged as the face of Islamist radicalism. He is doing everything to appease Islamists, from waging expensive wars to affirm political Islamism to converting ancient cathedrals and churches like Hagia Sophia into mosques. But Erdogan wasn't always the firebrand Islamist leader that he is now. The Turkish president turned a full-blown Islamist strongman only after Turkey went into an economic crisis. Ankara's forex reserves are dwindling. Its currency is hitting record lows against the US dollar. The dipping tourist footfall, the sanctions threat, and the COVID-19 pandemic are further destroying the Turkish economy. Erdogan's lackluster fiscal policies are killing what was once a booming economy. Therefore, he is using populist Islamist policies to make up for the popularity that he is losing. This is not to suggest that Erdogan was a moderate or liberal leader. but his ideological allegiance has always been untrustworthy erdogan had started off his political career as a soft islamist with the islamist welfare party however in the 1990s the islamist welfare party was banned because it went against turkish secularism therefore erdogan founded the moderate and conservative justice and development party or the akp in 2001 Then Erdogan did not rake up radical Islamism for quite some time before Turkey plunged into an economic crisis that started with a brutal confrontation between Ankara and Moscow. In 2015, Ankara had shot down a Russian fighter aircraft that had intruded into Turkish airspace. Erdogan had jumped to take credit for the move and this started the end of the booming Turkish economy. The Russian president Putin had retaliated by ravaging Turkey's tourism industry that contributes around 12% to the total Turkish GDP and remains the primary source of its forex inflows. Moscow had reduced the number of Russians visiting Turkey and also the number of Turks traveling to Russia. Nevertheless, in 2016, Turkey had apologized for the incident, but the Turkish economy could never bounce back in face of a string of setbacks coming its way. In August 2018, Ankara had a major fallout with Washington over the detention of an American pastor in Turkey. Trump had then slapped sanctions on Turkey. The repercussions on the Turkish economy were visible. There was an imminent currency collapse in 2018, and Turkey was clubbed with Argentina by the International Monetary Fund as a country with the worst performing currency. It was somewhere around this time that Erdogan turned into a full-blown Islamist given the onslaughts that the Turkish economy was facing. Erdogan's fiscal policies were not able to resurrect the Turkish economy. Erdogan therefore became liable for single-handedly murdering the Turkish economy. Consequently, he used hardline Islamist policies to make up for the Turkish economic crisis. In 2019, Turkey waged endless wars in Syria's Idlib and started backing the Muslim Brotherhood forces in Libya. This year, Erdogan has started antagonizing the Eastern Mediterranean by encircling the waters and continental shelves of Cyprus and Greece. Turkey's economy has taken a beating. Ankara is reeling under another currency crisis. Turkish lira has hit a record low against the US dollar and euro. Turkey's lira has slipped to its weakest level since May when the Turkish currency had hit a record low. The continuous depreciation of lira is forcing Turkish citizens to place their foreign currency deposits in banks in a sign of growing distrust towards lira. At the same time, the Islamist country recorded an inflation of 12.6% going beyond the expectations of economists. Moreover, foreign investors are not ready to park their funds in the Islamist country and forex reserves are bound to dip even further. No one wants to invest in such an unpredictable country. Investors never know which war Turkey might take up all of a sudden, inviting sanctions from powers like the US and the EU. According to Turkey's central bank statistics, foreign investment in the Istanbul Stock Exchange has decreased sharply from 32.3 billion US dollars to 24.4 billion US dollars this year. Only as recently as 2013, the figure stood at a mammoth 82 billion US dollars. For the first time in the last 16 years, less than 50% of the stocks are owned by foreign investors. He refuses to go by what the experts say. It is well settled among economists that interest rates must be raised in order to restrict inflation, but Erdogan believes that higher interest rates further push inflation. 
It is expected that Aradwan will again cut interest rates which would make borrowing easier and create greater liquidity resulting in higher inflation. Aradwan has driven Turkey into a massive economic crisis and he is only turning into an Islamist because of the Turkish economic crisis to divert the attention of the masses.